I went from failing my first chemistry exam to scoring top in the world in the chemistry AS level exam. I also scored the best in chemistry in my cohort of more than 120 students, with most of the students being a year older than me. Here's how you can too. By the way, these tips apply to every subject, not just chemistry. I still vividly remember taking my first chemistry exam in 8th grade. I was never naturally gifted in chemistry. For some reason, I found something as simple as balancing really difficult, and I couldn't balance several chemical equations in the test. In one of my first chemistry AS level topical exams in 11th grade, I scored much lower than I expected. I remember being really devastated and hard on myself for that. What did I do incorrect in those exams, and how did I fix them? If you're struggling in chemistry or any subject, you're not alone. I've been there too. So I'm making this video to give you the advice I wish I could give my younger self. I hope it helps you. Here are the top mistakes and how to fix them. The first mistake I made in the first exam I failed was not memorizing something that would be tested. The formula of common ions like NH4 plus and NO3 minus. Before 11th grade, my chemistry teachers weren't the best, so I would often misunderstand which content would be tested. I really struggled because I didn't have any tutoring outside school to teach me. And I would always feel like at least one unexpected thing would come out in every test. In 11th grade, I had a really amazing chemistry teacher. And that was when I realized my previous struggles were because my notes just weren't complete. Because I know not everyone has access to good teachers. I gave access to all my complete detailed chemistry AS level notes that I used to ace the exam in these videos. If you really review all these notes, nothing that comes out on the exam will be unexpected to you. My second mistake was not believing in myself. It sounds really cliche, but your mindset on the exam day is really important. If your mind is clouded with panic thoughts of, I can't do this, it will affect your ability to perform well on the questions. How do you avoid this? Practice, practice, practice past questions until you're confident that you can do any question. Let me give you an example. During my A2 level exam, this question came out on my chemistry exam. If you had asked me to do this in the beginning of 11th grade, I would have panicked and believed I would get the question wrong. Because back then, I thought I just wasn't good at chemistry. Never believe that you are bad at a subject. It keeps you in the mindset that you cannot improve when that is not true at all. You can always find a way to overcome your weaknesses. So when I was taking the A2 level exam, I looked at the question calmly, and then I skipped it. Why? Because I knew after thinking about it for a few moments that I couldn't think of any answer yet. But after my first run through of the paper, I came back to the question with my mind clear and fresh and confident. And I was able to solve it so much faster. Moving on to the mistakes I made in my 11th grade chemistry exam. Back then, I answered this question wrongly. Looking back, it feels kind of silly that I got this wrong. I'm sure most of you would be able to solve it quickly and correctly. But I remember what was happening during the exam in my head. All the information I had memorized was just jumbled up in my head as I tried to make a decision. That was because I hadn't developed a structured way of thinking while revising. Here's how I should have approached the question. First, are we comparing ions or atoms? If we're comparing ions, we'll have to remember to add the outer shell of electrons or remove them. After removing or adding the outer shell of electrons, if needed, how many shells does each species have? If one has more shells, of course, it definitely has a greater atomic or ionic radius. If they have the same number of shells, we have to compare their nuclear charges. The one with a higher nuclear charge will have a smaller atomic radius. During the 11th grade exam, I made so many silly mistakes that are common for students to make. As I progressed through AS and A-level, my teacher taught us the common mistakes that students make. I realized just being aware of the common mistakes guaranteed you wouldn't make the same mistake. If you're not aware of the common mistakes in chemistry AS and A-level, check out my video here on all the common mistakes students make on the subject. Another mistake I made was missing parts of the question out of carelessness. In A-level exams in particular, questions tend to be structured like this, with two parts. The first part contains most of the question and content, 
and the second part contains an additional question or condition you must keep in mind while answering. I often found myself forgetting the second part in my rush to finish the paper and also out of tiredness. This also happened to me a lot in the mathematics statistics paper, like a ridiculous number of times. I would make lots of silly mistakes from not reading parts of the question. So one day I sat down and thought, I have to fix this problem. So the next time I did a practice paper, instead of diving right into the questions, I skimmed through all the questions first. And then I circled the parts of each question I was likely to forget about based on the careless mistakes I had made in the past. If there was something I really tended to forget to answer, I would write down, don't forget the thing in pencil in the working space so there would be no chance I would miss it. After that, my scores in both subjects improved so much. If you're struggling with your studies, maybe your current exam or study techniques are what is hindering you. Instead of trying again and again with more and more effort and the same strategy, sometimes you have to change your approach. Think of it as a problem. What are you doing wrong? What can you fix? How can you improve your solution? How can you solve it? In ninth grade, I achieved an A in additional mathematics when a lot of other people in my class got A stars. Disappointed in myself, I adopted the mindset that mathematics just wasn't my strength. I just wasn't good at it. Like I said in the beginning, never get trapped in this way of thinking. One day, when I told my mathematics teacher that I just wasn't good at mathematics, he told me I couldn't think like that. I had to find a solution. That completely changed my entire mindset and I started approaching my weakness as a problem that I had to solve. I thought back to my past experience in primary school when I would score much better in mathematics exams, trying to remember what approaches I used. I realized two key strategies. One, practicing with questions much harder than the exam standard. And two, polishing my rechecking skills. In the end, I was able to score the highest in mathematics in my cohort in 12th grade and score an A-star in A-levels. If you want to know the rechecking strategies I used to score an A-star in mathematics A-levels, watch this video I made and stay tuned for an upcoming video on A-level integration. My last message is about what to do after you mess up an exam. Failing or messing up on an exam absolutely sucks, no matter what. There's really nothing anyone can say that can make it feel better. And sometimes, it can be really difficult to recover from the setback. But always remember, you can't change the past. No amount of agonizing over the score you got can change anything. All you can do is get back up and try harder and better on the next one. Good luck on your exams! You can do it!